Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jim Aran, and today we're going to figure out what in the world is Forgone Early Access on the Epic Game Store. It is developed and published by Big Blue Bubble, and they uh, they haven't brought us anything extraordinary, but they, what they have brought us is a game that is very familiar to Blasphemous, if you've played, although the only thing similar is pretty much the play style. Everything else is uh, about as different as you can expect it to be. Blasphemous was not RPG. This is a lot more RPG related uh, because you have uh, drops and everything that you can level up with your character. As well as this is more futuristic, post-apocalyptic, uh, whereas Blasphemous was pretty much on the medieval era. So, first things first, let's look at the options menu. Now I want to spend a little bit of time and criticize the developers for this design choice because it is very frustrating to me. And here is why. The resolution, as you can see, has all these 16x9 options and the refresh rate was bu is bundled into those options, which I think that the refresh rate could be a different option that you can choose. But that's besides the point, or you can set up your own custom refresh rate which you cannot at the moment. I understand this is early access and there's going to be a lot of improvements, but there's no ultra wide resolution. And this is the trouble I had with the game when I first launched it, or lack thereof, trouble. The game launched fine and it was in ultra wide mode. And then uh, as soon as I went to the settings and I changed the resolution, well, I, show up, I hit the options for the resolution because it was default to 59 Hertz. I was presented with these options and I could not revert back to ultra wide. Now as you can see there's going to be some ultra wide gameplays on YouTube and it is very sad because the game does fully 100% support ultra wide resolution but the developers have decided not to add that feature and not to let people play on that resolution and what do I mean by that is well I did spend a lot of time on figuring out how to revert the game into the original settings and remove every trace of the game from a computer so that I could pretty much go back to the initial settings. And I could not for the life of me figure that out or achieve it. So I deleted all of the system files from my computer. I uninstalled the game. I pretty much did everything in my power. I cleared my registry keys nothing brought ultra wide back i even went on to the settings uh files of the game and i altered the the resolution values but if you if you don't set it to read only the game will just revert back to the original settings on the on the values and then if you do set as read only the resolution is going to be in gibberish and the game will still not run on the desired resolution. So I did contact the developers uh, through multiple channels in order to address this issue and they just flat out deny the fact that they're going to be able to help me with it because it's an artistic choice. And the, the there's no plans for it to be enabled because the game is not supposed to work on ultra wide, and you know what? Listen, I get it. I get that you uh, you don't want to enable it, but don't tease us by uh, having it enabled in the beginning. It was kind of frustrating. I've been putting this game off for quite some time because of that. I kind of left a sour taste in my mouth, but hey, I got the game for free, and I will be damned if I don't make content on it. So. That rant aside, which I hope will be the end of that, you have windowed mode, you can uh, remap the keys, you can uh, enable vibration, low health effect, which is kind of annoying, but you do need it to warn you that your health is kind of running low, and tooltips in combat, and then you also have the volume slider. They've paid a lot more attention on the volume than the graphical settings. As you can see, there's no graphical settings either, you cannot change the fidelity of the graphics, but this is a pixel art game. You may be familiar with how I feel about pixel art games, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I will admit that it's done pretty nicely. It's uh, 
there's a lot of aesthetic going on. The backgrounds have a lot of attention. They are kind of three-dimensional in the way they move a little bit slower than what your front backgrounds move. So overall, they've, they've paid a lot of attention to the game and they made it look as uh, nice as possible. So let's kick things off with the inventory system. So this is your inventory system and you have a few weapons. So there's a few weapon varieties. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's, uh, there's four. And one of them, for the life of me, I haven't dropped yet. And I've seen other gameplays, people have that weapon type way before me. So one of them is a spear and it kind of does attacks like that. Once you jump, it will push you forward, which is pretty cool. You cannot really cancel the attacks once they're happening unless you dodge or jump. And that will cancel the attacks and it's going to be important because some of the enemies will be attacking you a lot quicker. Then you have the short sword, which is going to be kind of like a regular sword. It's going to be very fast attacking and uh, it's going to be easy to clear out enemies that are sticking on walls. You also have, well, I don't have any, but you also have a long sword, which is going to be very slow attack, but higher damage. Absolutely do not use that weapon because I've had the worst luck with it. I don't even know what's in the game. And then the final weapon type that I haven't dropped yet ever is going to be uh, like daggers kind of deal. They're going to have a lot more swirly attacks and they're going to have a lot faster, uh, lower damage attacks. Then you come to your weapons. Right now I have the bow equipped, and on the top right corner you're going to see a crosshair with a number 4 on it. That's going to be your ammo. The maximum ammo you can hold is 12. And if you press Y on the controller, and for the love of God, please play on the controller, you're going to shoot. And in the combat, there's going to be an issue that I want to bring up, and it's the fact that you cannot aim who you're shooting at. So you have no control of whether or not you want to eliminate the guy shooting at you, or the melee guy that is just sitting there idle, because he's a little bit closer to you, and therefore that's who the game wants to aim at. So I, I, I do hope that they do give us some form of uh, aiming for the weapons, because I would like to prioritize who I attack with my range attacks. Then after that you have a shotgun, you have a pistol, and then you have a rifle. I will demonstrate what the shotgun looks like. Here you go, it's pretty cool. I'm going to keep this way equipped for now to see how it works. I haven't used it yet, but uh, it doesn't do a lot of damage. I'm just going to switch back to this. And then you have your armor, chest armor, basically. Not much else. That just adds, increases your health and uh, nothing else. You have rings, which for some reason you can only equip one. It's kind of silly. I would assume that you can at least equip two for each one of each hand. If not ten, one for each finger. And finally, you have an emblem, kind of like a necklace. You can only equip one. And that also increases your damage and your health. So, you have a couple of stations. I just hit. You have the forge. In the forge, you can mark items for salvage. And if you do salvage them, they will give you gold. So I will be doing that with the weapons I'm not using. And uh, let's see. Bada beam, bada boom. There we go. And you can also upgrade them. As you can see on the uh, icon on the right side, where it says 35, it shows, displays the icon of the weapon uh, on the, and the name. It says spear. On top of that, it has a level. And those boxes are going to be how, much, how many levels it's been upgraded for. And a little bit lower than that, you're going to see upgrade uh, 1620. Gold is what is required. It's a tremendous amount of gold. It may not seem that much, but enemies don't really drop that much gold anyway. And uh, the higher the rarity of the weapon, uh, the more upgrades you can do to it. So the blue ones, which are going to be the regular ones, uh, not, the non-colored ones are going to be the regular ones. The blue ones are going to be two levels, and then the purple ones are going to be three levels. I haven't encountered the next rarity, so we're going to be looking forward to that. And you can do that with all the equipment that you have here. Which is pretty good. We're gonna upgrade that thing because we need to. And last but not least, over on this side, you have the oratory. This is gonna be your skill tree. You have two currencies. You have the gold, which is 70 on the top left, and then you have the crystals. I don't know what you call them yet, <laughs> which I have zero because I just recently died. 
and you can upgrade your abilities here. And as you can see, these are red because you can only choose one of these paths to go to. Once you choose one of these two initiating uh, abilities, then the rest of the path is going to be locked until you actually allocate your... Um, not allocate, I mean refund your points. And you can refund them, but it does cost gold. And over here you can level up or switch your skills, which are going to be with the left and the right trigger. The, uh, the restoration is going to be, uh, as long as you hold down the left trigger, you're going to be healing. And it p charges up by killing enemies. And then this is kind of like a dash surge. It does a lot of damage, so this one is a good one too. And you have multiple skill trees uh, to discover that I haven't gotten to yet because it's... Uh, the game is fucking difficult. I've played for many hours and it is beating my fucking ass. It's clapping me. It's My ass cheeks are hurting. I just... Uh, I'm having a lot of trouble with the game, so... I'm gonna show you a little bit of combat, and I do... want to touch on this one more time. Developers, please add ultra-wide support. It is uh, quite frustrating that there's no ultra-wide support. Now, you can either go down the stairs or you can hit down and then jump. So that you can jump quickly. And to destroy these boxes, these boxes dropped some weapons for me. So here we go, with the left, uh, with the right joystick, you're gonna kinda look down and get a glimpse of the enemies. Here we go. There's the dodge, you saw the dodge, now I'm gonna be destroying these guys very easily, but up next, it's gonna be the place that I died, so... I'm going to show you how the aiming works in this game, and it works just like that. So, you just hit the... Okay, so we're going to play it like that, huh? Okay. Fuck. Okay, so... It's kind of hard to focus and uh, play this game. All of these things are happening. The turrets are gonna be a bitch. So this is a little bit frustrating here. What happened to me earlier was I attacked the turret and my character moved forward and I ended up getting in front of the turret so it damaged me. But you cannot dodge, you cannot slide past the turrets which is really really frustrating. Also that happens with the enemies when they attack you. If they finish their end, okay, really? If they... Oh my god, I am stuck here. See, that that was just a wasted arrow. And it's really, really frustrating. Okay, well, fuck me, I guess. I'm gonna have to heal. It is really frustrating when you have little to no control. Like, why can I not shoot these guys here? I would really like to know. Alright, so... Where am I? Where's my chest? Didn't I die here earlier? Well, you can find out easily. If you go on the map, here it shows you what you've discovered so far. And where you've died last. So. This is the guy I'm talking about. Once he attacks, you're gonna see his weapon right in front of you. If you end up going near that weapon, it will damage you and you will die. We lose a lot of health. Oh, here we go. Yeah. And... Yeah, you're getting a glimpse on how difficult the game is. So the mechanics work very similarly to... You guessed it, right? Uh, Dark Souls. Uh, Dark Souls, yes. I was almost said Darksiders. My favorite game of all time. The mechanics work pretty much exactly the same as Dark Souls. You have the ability to go retrieve your shit when you die. If you die before retrieving it, then that disappears, and uh, good luck to you. Uh, it's really hard to focus and play the game at the same time. So, these are pretty much the mechanics for the game. I do like the fact that when you reach a ledge, it will... And here's what I'm talking about, you cannot dodge past the motherfucking turret but you can 
uh, end up right in front of it while you're attacking. So it's it's a lot of details like that in the combat that destroy the flow for me and make the game really really frustrating. It's a really big shame because the game, as, as far as the game is concerned, is really fun. I, I, I'm entirely surprised at how much fun I'm having with a platformer game, a Souls-like platformer game, if that. It is significantly unheard of that I would end up having fun with these types of games. And I kind of demonstrated that by accident, how if you walk in front of that dude, you do get fucked. Well, here you go, and that, that fucking sucks. It's, and I don't think it has to do with skill so much as it does with the fact that the game just has really frustrating mechanics. The difficulty of the game can be a little bit toned down, but more importantly, what I would like to see is, and here's the example that I was talking about. I don't want to attack the guy that is not a threat to me. I want to attack the guy that is shooting my face. And now I'm out of arrows. The way you replenish arrows is by just killing more enemies, and that's pretty much a drop that you can uh, grab. So, this is essentially the bread and butter for the game. What you've seen so far is pretty much the game. I would like to see uh, ultra wide support. I would like to see difficulty options in order to be able to change how difficult the game is. This sucks. This is where I died last. I wish I. Hadn't died, obviously, so I can grab my shit, but we're way past that now, aren't we? And there's a turret that you, for some fucking reason, cannot dodge through it. I don't understand why <laughs> I cannot dodge past the turret. It is, <laughs> it is by far one of the most frustrating aspects of the game, so... I'm just waiting to die again, which is gonna happen inevitably, because I am not good at this game. There we go. That took a while. So, there you have it, guys. The, there's another thing I want to criticize about the game, and that's the fact that there's an exclusivity with the Epic Game Store uh, for a year. By the time this game comes out on Steam, it's going to be March 1st, or March 31st, I believe, of 2021. I hardly believe anyone is going to be interested in the game by then. And if they are perfect, there's going to be some sales and everything. It's an absolutely fun game. I do appreciate how fun the game is. And the fact that it's managed to grab my attention. Someone that absolutely hates platformers and pixelated art games and souls like games. So, I would like to see a, I don't know, a difficulty option. So that, you know, the more hardcore gamers can... Pretty much wipe my ass with it and beat the game in like five hours and chumps like me can still have some fun while pretending to steer the boat's captain kind of like uh andy or dwight in the office yeah it was dwight when he was pretending to be the captain so i would like to see the ultra white support i would like to see a little bit more refined combat that isn't as clunky and creates so many frustrating moments with the game and I would also like to see a little bit more fluidity. The art style is amazing. The, the audio is amazing. I do like the sound effects. The voice acting is good too. There is a little bit of voice acting in the game that I haven't been able to record yet. But um, the storyline is interesting, surprisingly enough. It's a really fun game. And it's still in early access. I know they're going to keep working on it. I really do hope they address some of the issues and I really do hope that they make the teleportation a little bit more easy. There are these checkpoints, so you don't have to travel through all these areas of the game if you die. But it, they're not not—they're really far and few in between. So, I don't know. 
the game is just not forgiving at all. That is my <laughs> my major complaint with it, but it's not... I don't think it, the game is supposed to be forgiving, to be honest. I, I think this is one of those games that is going to wipe your ass and, and just call you names while it does it too. So, there you have it, guys. I hope this has been helpful. I'll see you next time.